Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond. Welcome back to another YouTube video. And in this video, I want to tell you about a conversation I had with the coworker last week where we were discussing some like defensive techniques or protections you can put in place to potentially stop hackers and malware and all the bad stuff. Um, now, I don't mean for any of this stuff to be like the silver bullet or some magic wand that'll just make all the bad stuff go away. These are some poor man's practices or band-aid solutions that aren't foolproof by any means. Like they can be bypassed, but there's small stuff that might get in the way of a threat actor and just be annoying or a nuisance. I had told her about these exercises that I had participated in where there was a red team or opposing force like acting against us. And we had to harden things and tighten things up so they wouldn't be able to get in. So I would disable the command prompt or enable PowerShell constrained language mode. And that small stuff would, again, get in the way of the attacker. They might have to work around it or it might just, I don't know, if they're a, a low tier threat actor or a script kitty, they just like throw their hands up and say, hey, this isn't working, what the heck, and give up. Um, maybe that's not always the case. I don't, again, mean to showcase this as anything crazy or incredible, but I do want to discuss it because when I had mentioned this to her, she had the reaction like, what? Disabling command prompt? That's a thing? You can do that? So I didn't know. Maybe some people aren't aware of this thing, so I wanted to showcase it and bring it to you because I kind of played with it a little bit. So let me open up a web browser and I'll simply search for what I want to do, right? What I tell people like, hey, if you want to learn, you can Google. And I'm going to type in disable command prompt, have a few articles returned here. I see a help desk geek. I see a how to geek. How to geek has a good one. They want to disable the command prompt and the run program in Windows. So you could do this with group policy, right? That's some policy you could set and enforce out. Uh, I won't showcase that because group policy can be big and annoying and overwhelming very, very easily. So again, I'll showcase kind of my poor man's methodology of using the Windows registry, right? That big database or dictionary of Windows settings and customizations and configuration that you can kind of tweak and explore. So they're showcasing this registry key here, H key, current user, software, policies, Microsoft Windows system. And they're setting a value here, disable CMD with a type of D word or a 32 bit value. And they're gonna end up setting it to a value of one. This can be set to a value of zero, which means you basically don't have that registry value set at all. The command prompt is still enabled, it's not disabled. It can be set to a value of one where the command prompt is disabled and you're also aren't allowing the execution of scripts like a .bat script or .cmd or a .com script. I've also seen the value of two and the value of two doesn't include the scripts. It'll just block access to the command prompt. Now, when I say access to the command prompt, I mean like opening up cmd.exe or typing in the command prompt to open this big spooky black box that you have on your system where you could be typing in commands like, okay, who am I or DIR to get a file system output or copy files or move files or delete files. You have shell access to the machine. This is super duper handy for the bad guys that are trying to do malicious stuff. Uh, you might also use this as a system administrator trying to do your job. Um, so I note this, okay, you can toggle this on when you're trying to board up the windows and defend yourself and you can toggle it off so you still have access to the command prompt if you're trying to do any other power user or sysadmin thing because this can kind of be circumvented by opening up commands within PowerShell or Visual Basic script, creating a W script object, etc. Et uh, so again, this isn't a foolproof, bulletproof solution. It's just a band-aid thing that you can do. I don't mean to encourage or enforce this as an actual security measure. It's just a thing that might trip someone up if they haven't encountered it before. So let me walk through this, right? I'm gonna close out of this command prompt and I'm going to grab this registry key location. I'm gonna fire up PowerShell or my Windows terminal in this case, cause that'll start it for me, okay? So I want to try and set this registry value with the reg command or that old school cmd.exe command. And I'll use that reg add syntax. And if you don't know the parameters, the arguments to reg add, you can check out the help with the forward slash question mark. And you can see the syntax that this requires is okay, reg add, of course, and then the key name that we want to work with the value name that we saw, which was that disable CMD, the type that we need, so reg D word, 
as a syntax here for that 32-bit value, and then slash D for the data that we actually wanna set. So I will go ahead and reg add, and I'll paste in that kind of location here. We'll specify slash V the value of disable CMD. The type will be reg D word for that 32-bit value, and I'm gonna specify slash D for the data. Now, as I mentioned, I'm gonna set this to the value two to showcase that not blocking scripts or dot bad or dot CMD or dot com. Now, when you run this, if you're running in a low privilege or an, an unescalated or unelevated command prompt or PowerShell, it'll get access denied because you need to be an administrator so you can actually modify the registry. So I'm gonna copy this whole syntax here and I'll close out this window and I'll open up PowerShell or Windows Terminal one more time with Control Shift Enter so that way I can actually open it as an administrator. Now when I run this command, if I whack enter here, it says the operation completed successfully. Great. So if I were to try and open up that cmd.exe or command prompt, now I'll get the notification, hey, the command prompt has been disabled by your administrator. Awesome, super cool, that's what we wanted. Now, when I set this with that registry value of two, it's not foolproof. So let's say I was still in PowerShell, right? So I could type in CMD and I could try and interact with CMD interactively, like spawn the shell, and that will give me the notification, the error that's been disabled by your administrator. Gimmick here, when you have the registry value set to the value two, you could still do things like CMD slash C to try and run a command in line or, or pass as an argument to CMD. Let me type in who am I and you'll still get that value out. You'll still actually run that command. And maybe I could, okay, just echo a batch or a CMD variable so you trust me and believe me that I am in fact running uh, within CMD not just PowerShell for some reason interpreting that. I'll get a value of zero. Okay, so that, those percent symbols there indicated like that's a real cmd.exe or batch value. Uh, that's good to know because we are kind of circumventing that, hey, the command prompt has been disabled by your administrator. Now I noticed this and I thought like, that's weird. It's not really disabling the command prompt. Uh, so I thought like, all right, let me do a little bit more Googling. I'm gonna do that cmd help and I noticed it here in the Microsoft documentation. So hopping over to this web page, you can see some other information or other things that CMD can do. When I just ran that slash C argument or that parameter, it'll carry out the command specified by the string or whatever value we pass following the slash C, and then it'll exit or stop. If I were to use that slash K, it would carry out the command and then try to continue and open CMD naturally. I'll show you that. If I were to use cmd slash k, who am I? I'll get John as the output of the who am I command, and then it'll try and continue to open cmd.exe interactively, and it'll get that command prompt has been disabled by your administrator error. Interesting. Another interesting thing that I found while I was looking through this is that there's this thing called cmd auto run commands. Now you might have noticed it in that slash D argument, it'll disable the execution of auto run commands. So let me show you these auto run commands because if you scroll down the documentation, it tells you a little bit about it. If you don't specify that slash D in the string, cmd.exe will look for the following registry subkeys. There's a local machine setting and a current user setting where there's an auto run value set to expand SZ or like a little string. So you could set a command to run as you start up the command prompt and it's set with this auto run value name and this reg expand sz type. So let me show you that. This is kind of interesting and peculiar. Um, I'm going to get back into my PowerShell here and I'll run that reg add command with pasting in this command processor registry location. Oh, and I pasted that twice, sorry. The auto run is the actual value here and that reg expand SZ is the type. So let me break up that command. I'll use that slash T to specify the type and I'll use that slash V to specify auto run being the value and I'll specify the data here. In this case, I'm gonna set this to something interesting. You could set it to like date. Okay, cool, whatsoever. Uh, reg add current Microsoft. Oh, 
that has a space in it. So I need to specify a string around the command processor value. That space is gonna trip up the processing of that command. So if I specify this to date, now I would be able to run, okay, cmd slash c, who am I? And it actually tells me the date. It's executing the date command before it even ran who am I? Uh, let me exit out of that. Now, if I were to change this to simply exit, that's going to force that command prompt to never actually run, right? So if I were to try and run CMD, I don't even get the banner anymore or that message, hey, the command prompt has been disabled. Uh, now it just tries to open up cmd.exe and then immediately closes. So if I were to try and open CMD interactively, the window doesn't even show up or at least it does and then it closes itself so quickly you don't even notice it. That way I can't run that slash C who am I because exit is going to run before the command and now I've completely nerfed cmd.exe. However, we did note that that slash D argument that we read in this documentation here, that will ignore the execution of these auto run commands or the value that we set in this registry key. So I could use cmd slash c slash d. And who am I is still erroring. So, oh, I should actually specify that beforehand. That's kind of the gimmick. Who am I? There we go. Because slash d needs to know to do that and not process those auto run commands before trying to execute something. There we go. Gimmick here is that, sure, you can still run commands uh, even with the slash C if you don't include this auto run value. If you do include this auto run value, you'll need to specify slash D for it to actually be able to execute the command within command prompt. This is all in the scenario that you have set that disable CMD value to two. You don't even have to worry about this if you were to set it to one. And that's kind of neat, right? So let me go back to that command where I set the current user software policies, Microsoft Windows system, disable CMD all the way down to one. That already exists, so we can overwrite it. Uh, if you don't want to see that notification, you can specify that slash F, and that will force that registry tweak. There we go. Now the operation is completed successfully. If I were to try and invoke CMD, I'll get the command prompt has been disabled by your administrator. Again, I'm invoking CMD interactively, so we know that that wasn't going to be an issue. But if I were to try and use that slash C, who am I? we still get that banner, the command prompt has been disabled by your administrator. So cool, we've stopped and blocked the access to CMD slash C, which you might actually see sometimes often in like malware stagers or some droppers that will try and invoke commands through command prompt. So that could theoretically actually stop that. But obviously I'm still running commands within PowerShell, that hasn't been disabled or nerfed. Uh, we could do it in Visual Basic script if we really wanted to, but it is neat that this has just, okay, stopped the execution of batch scripts or other scripts. And let me prove that to you. Let me do a notepad like a script.bat, how about that? Uh, yep, let's go ahead and create the file. I'm just gonna do an at echo off and then try and run echo. Hello, I am running from a batch script. Save that. Good. I realized that wasn't extremely easy to see. Okay. Trying to dot slash script dot bat to execute it will still give us that error. Hey, the command prompt has been disabled by your administrator. So the takeaway, if you use this registry tweak, make sure you set that to one and not two. If you see some of those articles or blog posts that recommend it, hey, try and use that value two. Note that it can still be circumvented with cmd slash c, which I think is actually kind of common in some malware stagers or droppers. So having that actually set is good. Now, again, I keep mentioning this and I keep adding this disclaimer because this is not a real security feature. It's not enforcing any other defense because it can be circumvented. Uh, let me show you Visual Basic Script. Visual Basic Script, run command, simply Google that and 
There is SS64 that has a fine example. You can run an external command if you have a shell object, and that's invoked by creating a w script shell object. They have an example here where they create a shell object, creating it through w script, and you can see that's again w script shell, and then you can run something like notepad.exe or who am I or anything else, and that will just still execute. You're still running those commands, you just aren't invoking cmd.exe. So that's a thing that will happen, right? Let me um, notepad script.vbs. We'll create that, paste that command in there. And I'm gonna close out all of my notepad values, all of my notepad uh, commands or, or, or programs that I'm running right now. So there's no notepad whatsoever. And if I were to try and run that script.vbs, it opens up notepad because we've ran that command. Uh, I could change this to like calc.exe to prove that we're still running the command and we don't need a argument to pass to that. So let me do that one more time. And it probably doesn't know where calc.exe is. I think it got renamed like in Windows 10 to like calculator or something. Or is that still a thing? It is still a thing. Maybe it's not in Winder. Maybe it's in C System32 or a different location. This is where I <laughs> kind of go off the rails see windows system 32 calc there we go okay yeah it's in system 32 not just win okay sorry i kind of went off on a tangent there but we still cannot run cmd slash c like execute malware or anything when we have that registry value disable cmd set to a value of one so that might be handy, and obviously you can toggle that off if you're running within PowerShell or another means to actually execute commands. Uh, but two, when we have that set, will allow you to run things in line with slash C. Oh, and we still have that auto run enable, so we could remove that if we wanted to. Let me go do that real quick. Command processor, we can delete, because that is set to exit currently. Remove those arguments. Yep, we'll delete it. Now, trying to run who am I, it will execute because we have this disable CMD set to two. Setting it to one will not allow us to pass things in with slash C or slash K. So that is what we want if we actually want to board up the windows and nerf command prompt. Again, I said all this with the disclaimer, not a real security measure or enforcement. It's just some trick that you can do to maybe temporarily board up the windows, although it can be kind of worked around in other ways. So this has been longer of a video than it needed to be, but thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed this. Maybe it's kind of cool to see some maybe quote unquote defensive <laughs> or protective measures, but I hope it was fun and I appreciate you hanging out with me. So thanks so much, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.